All right, in part four, let's look at the client side of the scripting here. So we're gonna actually make it drivable. So first thing we're gonna do is select our car handler script there and add a local script. Let's just call this car client. Uh, and we're gonna create a couple objects inside of it. We're gonna create a bool value called stop. And we're gonna create an object value called car. Okay. So what the stop bool value is gonna do is the car handler is gonna use that to tell the car client to stop working, basically to terminate itself. And the car object value is gonna be used for the car client to reference the actual car model here. So let's work on that. In the car client, let's just reference these values first. So equal car equals script wait for child car dot value and stop equals script wait for child stop. And we're gonna write two functions here. Function start and local function stop. And actually, we're going to have another one here, local function update, which will run every frame. <clears throat> so let's look this up. So very first thing we need is run start. And then we need to set up listening for the stop to change. Stop that changed. Should stop. If not, should stop. Stop. <laughs> Don't go on. Otherwise, run the stop function. Okay. Now another weird use case is maybe by the time the script starts running, the server has already registered or told the script to stop. So just in case that happens in any use case, let's check that first and foremost. So if stop that value, then stop return end. We're actually do that right after the start, so that the cleanup still works properly. Okay. So within our start function, what we want to do is hook up the update to heartbeat, and then in stop, we'll disconnect that heartbeat. So we're going to keep a reference to that connection outside. And in our start, say so heartbeat equals game get service run service dot heartbeat, and connect that to our update function. And by default, that will also give us a delta time value. So how much time has elapsed between each frame, and we can use that for some future updates. So in stop, we can just do heartbeat disconnect. Okay, and then we'll use this function to update our controls and such. But before we do anything, I wanna hook this up to the server script also and get that working. So let's output some stuff first here. So we'll say print start client, and we'll do stop. And we won't worry about update because I'll just spam the output a lot. Okay. So go back to the car handler script. And let's reference this car client script here. And we're also going to want to keep a reference to it. When we create it for per player. So with our reference to the original here, car client script, when we sit in the seat, we want to give them a copy of that script and set the car value to the car. So this is pretty easy. All we have to do is make the client script and actually we'll just set it to the occupied client script equals car client script clone. And then we need to set this to the player's backpack. Before that though, we're gonna set occupied client script dot car dot value to our car, which again, that references the parent right here. Okay. So when the player leaves the car, we need to kill that script. So, 
occupy client script dot stop dot value equals true. Again, in the case that the player left, that's not going to be there anymore. So we might need to check if it's even parented anymore. And then we'll set it to nil regardless at the end. So what we also want to do here is explicitly delete it ourselves after a little bit. So we want to create another reference to it. And the reason is because we're actually setting it to nil down here. So we want to be careful with that. So we need to create another reference to it. We'll just call it client. And then we're going to delay just three seconds. It's fine. That gives the client enough time to do whatever it needs. And then we're going to destroy it ourselves on this end. Okay, so again, what we did here is when the player sits in the seat, we clone that local script, we set the car value, and we give the player the script. And then when the player leaves the, the car, we set the stop value of the script to true, which then the car client will pick up on and run this function. And then we'll wait three seconds and destroy the script. We're also gonna destroy it here on the client because we just don't need it anymore. Again, that won't destroy it on the server side though, so we still need this to run here on the server side. Okay, so let's run it and make sure that everything worked. Again, we should go to output and go here. We see start client, so that script ran, and I jump out and it says stop client. And let's make sure that it actually got rid of the script. So yeah, nothing in backpack. Same thing under the server, nothing under backpack. Okay, so that worked. And again, I can get into it again, and it should work. And I should be able to basically abuse the system, you know, try to jump out really quickly, make sure that it still works. So yeah, that's working. Okay, so now we have successfully been able to spawn our script and get rid of it when we need to. So that's good. So now let's work on the update function. Basically what we want to do is split this into two pieces. First, we want to set or control the steering and then we also want to control the throttle. So first let's do steer and then we'll do throttle after that. All right, so how do we steer a car here? The way we're going to do this is actually by rotating the two front attachments here. So let me show you. So I go to run here. And let me go to the front right attachment. And if I set the Y orientation to 30, for instance, it actually rotates the wheel. And negative 30, just like that. So with that information, we can go back to our car client script and we can actually use the vehicle seats properties for steering, steer float, in order to steer a car. So let's get our steer value. Again, we have to reference the seat, which I forgot to do. So local seat equals car.body.vehicleSeat. And then we need to reference some of these attachments. So I'm going to reference these two front attachments here. So local attachment front left equals car.body.attachment front left. And then front right, front right. And what we want to do is set their orientation to zero, steer, and then negative 90, because it's already set to negative 90 here. We also need to multiply this by the max steering angle that we want. So maybe that's 30 or whatever. Uh, this is what's called a magic number though. We, so we want to throw this up here to define it. So we're gonna say max steer angle. And then I'm gonna copy this line and make that front right as well. So if we run it now, and I get into the car, I should be able to actually set the rotation up oh, and it didn't work. So what does it say? Attachment front left is not a valid member of model. So here's the debug example here. This is line five and go here. And yes, surely enough, attachment front left does not exist within the body or where does it exist under the platform. 
So I need to change this to chassis dot platform. Run it again in the car. And yes, now I can set the steer angle. But as you can see, it it sets it very quickly. So we actually should smooth that out. And there's a really simple way to do that. So we go back to the client script there. And one thing that you can't tell on camera, but it's actually reversed too. So I need to negate that. But an easy way to, to change this is basically to inter interpolate toward this value instead of just using it. So I'm actually going to store our actual steer value outside. And I'm gonna change this to steer goal. And what I'm gonna do is try to get to that goal using a really simple interpolation function. So I'm gonna set steer to whatever it currently is, and then we're gonna add steer goal minus steer. So this is the difference between what we want it to be versus what it currently is. And we're gonna multiply that by delta time times our seat's turn speed. I'll put that in parentheses. And just in case for whatever reason delta time is too big, we never want this value to be greater than one. So I'm gonna do math.min minimum of one. So if this happens to be over one, it'll choose one instead. And this will interpolate us toward our steer goal based on our turn speed defined in the vehicle seat. So right now the turn speed is set to one. So let's set it to four. And that's basically the sensitivity of how fast the wheels will turn based on input. So now it's a lot slower. And you can see if I go to the car and I go to the vehicle seat and I set it to 0.1, for instance, it's going to be even slower, way slower. So maybe just one. Yeah, nice and slow. If I set it to 10, it's a lot faster. So next, let's make it actually go forward and drive around. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to set some of these cylindrical values uh, for the motors. So whether or not you want it to be front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, drive or all wheel drive, um, that depends on how you set this up. I'm going to make it all wheel drive. So I'm going to set all of these cylindrical constraints. I'm going to go to cylinder uh, actuator type and set it to motor. Once we have our angular actuator type set to motor, then we need to set the motor max torque and angular velocity to get it going. But we're actually going to set motor max torque based on the vehicle seats torque value right here. So we're going to set this just kind of arbitrarily to a thousand and play with it from there. So go back to the car client script. And now we need to reference all four of these cylindricals. So let's do that. And then copy and paste this a few times, rename things. Okay, so now that we have that set, we can set our throttle. So let's reference our throttle value. C.throttle float. And actually, we're going to want to smooth this out the same way we did here. And we'll do that in a little bit, but first let's kind of look at what it does so we can see that. So we want to set the cylindrical front left. We want to set its motor max torque to torque, which is defined as the seat's torque. And we want to set that for all of them. Front right, rear left. You're right. And then we want to set the angular velocity. So we'll say the speed equals seat dot, I believe it's max speed. Go down here, see max speed. 
and we'll multiply that base on our throttle value. And then we'll go the cylinder front left and set the angular velocity to speed. Just like that. So now if we play, we will see that the value or the, the throttle can be set. There we go. You can see it's quite slow. So we can go back to the car, go to the vehicle seat, go to the torque and put another zero on it. And now it's just kind of spinning out of control. So one thing you'll notice is that it it's rotating. And the reason for that is we need to inverse some of our values there. So the, the right side wheels need to rotate in the opposite direction. So for the rights, we just throw and negate them like that. Try it again. And now we can drive around. And actually I am using the original 1000 uh, torque value for this. But it's working all right. But one thing again you'll notice is if I do set the torque up a lot more, so if we go to body, vehicle seats, set the torque to 1000, it sets the speed almost immediately and that just doesn't look too great. So one thing I'd like to do is also smooth out those values as well. Very similar, similar to how we did the steer. So we're going to create a throttle value, set it to zero, and we're just going to copy these two lines. And it should be throttle goal equals throttle float. And we're not going to do that value. We don't want it negated. We just want this throttle float to be the goal. And then throttle equals throttle plus throttle goal minus throttle. And then this value, we're also going to use turn speed to adjust the throttle uh, sensitivity as well. And that should be it for that. So now it should be much smoother. So again, if I go back to the seat and I set the max torque to 10,000, and I try running that, See, it's a little smoother in terms of setting the actual motor speed of the car. So that's nice, but it's a little slow. So maybe we could up it up a little bit. So go to the car, we go to the seat again, and now we can kind of just play around with values. So we can change the max B to you know, maybe 75. And we can see it's just kind of drifting around, right? So we kind of want to adjust that a little bit. You know, maybe we don't want it to be as slippery as that. So there's two ways we can do this. One, we can adjust the physical wheel and we can set custom physical properties and adjust the friction. But I also prefer to use the surface it's on because you might want different surfaces that have different friction levels. So in this case, I'm going to set, go to the base plate, hit custom physical properties, and I'm going to change the friction weight to 10. And then I'm going to change the friction to something like 0.8. So now it'll be, you know, catch its uh, the grip a lot better, but it'll still allow it to kind of slide around and stuff. Again, I have it right now set to all wheel drive, so uh, it's pretty easy to drive around. So I can go off the ramp and flip it over. And you see it went right back up like that. And that most of that reason is because the center of gravity is so low on the car. Oh, well, that time it didn't. Oh, it did. They flip back up. So yeah, there you go. Now you've got a car that can drive around. So that pretty much concludes all of this. I hope this was a helpful tutorial. Now there's a lot more that could be added after this. You could set, you know, a physical steering wheel to work and stuff. You could add gauges. You could add different values. You could add, you know, gear calculations of the sort, anything like that. Um, yeah, if people think there is more that they'd like to see, let me know and I can uh, try to do some more.